it's corona season, and I know y'all like the house right now, and y'all need to make some coffee for yourself, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's gonna be mad easy. We're gonna try to keep it mad cheap. We're gonna try to make it mad fast for you. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Eweezy, back again. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna go over some simple brew methods that you can do at home. Try to keep it really simple because coffee really is not that difficult. To attain or to figure out, you just gotta figure out what works for you. And I got three different ways that might work for you. They work for me. All these different ways do. And we're actually gonna brew the same coffee three different ways and let you decide uh, how you wanna go forward with it. All right, let's do it. So what we have uh, first is just a straight up plain old Mr. Coffee machine. I got this for like 20, I think it was $19.99 at Target. Works perfectly fine. Doesn't really matter. You make whatever you want in it. I'll show you exactly how to dial in whatever coffee it might be. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, then we have, uh, this is a fellow pour over kit. Uh, this is just like a nice little simple pour over kit. Costs like 90 bucks. Um, and you can make your coffee on the go. But if you're a pour over person, if you do like a Chemex or a Kalita or a Hario or whatever, um, or if you don't know any of the words I'm saying right now, it doesn't really matter. Uh, these are all really simple for a small investment. You can make really great coffee at home. And then we just got a straight up French press. And French presses are something that are a little bit more my uh, cup of tea. <laughs> but uh, I really like French presses because I like a heavier body mouth feel, all that stuff. And I'll explain why that does that in a little bit. The first one, the easy one, the relatively cheap one, is the Mr. Coffee Machine. So this is what your beans look like straight up, right? This is a whole bean. If you buy it from like a specialty coffee shop or whatever, you got whole bean. This is actually the best way you wanna buy your coffee. What we're using, uh, the coffee we're using today, give me one second. The bean we're gonna be brewing today is a bean that we call Fresh Prince. It's, a, it's an Ethiopian bean. All that stuff doesn't really matter, but we're just gonna brew the same coffee three different ways uh, so that you can you could actually understand that the same coffee can taste three different, can, can have three different flavor profiles, essentially. As long as it makes you happy, you move forward with it. So Usually when you buy coffee, you get a whole bean, but you need to get it ground and for in order to be able to make coffee this way. If not, your coffee's gonna taste real funny. It's pretty much like brewing rocks because drip coffee just means that the coffee, you pour water on top and then it drips into whatever the vessel might be, your cup, the glass, any of that kind of stuff. So your, your brew ratio for a drip machine or for filter coffee is anywhere from uh, one to 15 or one to 18. Uh, in this case, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna go one to 16 because I like the coffee to be a little bit more bold and usually people who make coffee at home like to do the same thing. So, of course, we're gonna take our vessel and we're gonna fill it the same way that you would fill it at home because I don't want you to feel like you gotta do anything different because this is being told at a coffee shop. I guess I'm a professional, but it doesn't matter. And this is a volumetric brewer, so whatever you pour in is what you're gonna get out. Even if you pour in 10 gallons, you're gonna get out 10 gallons. Brew now, that's it. This one, this one's some set it and forget it levels. We're gonna move that over there, move on to the next one. So the next method is the French press. This is the one that I actually like the most. French press coffee is actually filtered through metal. If you filter through paper, the paper actually catches all the oils and everything in the coffee. That like kind of kind of lighter, creamier part that you see on top of espresso or anything like that is actually just oil. So the, the paper catches all that and I like all of that. I like the heavier body when somebody says they want like a bold coffee or like a, a heavier, like a, a bigger like mouthfeel, that's actually what they're talking about is that they just want that bold like filtered through metal taste. The brew ratios on the French press are one to 12. So it's a, it's a lot more coffee for a lot uh, less water, but it's just to make it more bold. Coffee dripper, whatever happens, happens. You push it, you let it go. On this one, you actually are gonna time it. So I already poured the coffee in there. That was 56 grams of coffee to 850 uh, grams of water. It's a lot of water, but this is a eight cup fil uh, French press. And so really this is gonna make like two cups of coffee, uh, two American cups, cause you know, we like a lot of stuff, but yeah. So throw that in there. Let me get my hot water. So 
now we got the coffee going. Set it for five minutes. Let that boy cook. Stir it a little bit. Oh, y'all see the, y'all see the drip for the French press? So now that this is done, all you do is just push that down, drink you some coffee. With the screen that's in the bottom of this, uh, it actually holds all the grounds down. The reason why you actually want to have a, 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 a heavier, or like a more coarse grind is because all that stuff gets trapped underneath the screen. There's a couple companies that make French presses. This is just a, a cheap one. It, it, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's all chromed out. Uh, you know, so it looks expensive, but this is actually just a cheap one from Target that I got for like $30, $40. So, but you can get more expensive ones. There's a company called Espro that makes phenomenal ones, award-winning ones. They have ones that have uh, two or three seals. So when you plunge it, it keeps all that sediment below. But the, the thing about a French press is now that this on a dripper or when you do a pour over, since the coffee and the water are separated, you're not continuing to, to draw or extract coffee from it. But on a French press, you're continuing to extract uh, coffee flavor. Uh, sometimes it makes it more bitter, sometimes it makes it a little too strong, whatever. If you'd like, you can always pour it out of this and pour it into something else, or you can just drink it as it is and just let it get a little bit stronger. That's the OG way, you know what I'm saying? That's what the grandpas and grandmas used to do when they say coffee's not strong or not bold. That's, this is what they're talking about. This is what they want. That or some folders crystals. This one is the one I think that people want to see the most, but it's really up to the to the consumer. I'm gonna make you guys a pour over. I'm gonna show you how to make a pour over. It's a lot more steps. Uh, it's a lot more paying attention to it. And who knows, at, after the end of, you know, coronavirus quarantine, or maybe you're tired of spending money on coffee elsewhere at whatever you might buy it, you know, hopefully buy it at Deadstock. Uh, you might look to this as a, as a possibility or an option, but all these things you can kind of cater and make it work your way. But this is the one where I guess it's the most editable. Here is this fellow dripper, uh, fellow dripper. <laughs> what we have here is a dripper made by the company Fellow out of the Bay Area. Uh, they make super dope stuff. What you want to do for the most part whenever you're brewing anything is you want to heat your vessel. If you go to a coffee shop and they give you a coffee mug, you get a drink to, uh, for there and they don't heat your mug up, be mad, you know what I'm saying? I always tell me, yo, heat my mug, man. You know, it makes your coffee hot from the jump. It also uh, makes it so that things are clean and sterile. But what we're gonna do first is just wet the filter, which is wetting this filter so that we're not, uh, we're, we're trying to take some of the paper taste out, but we're also uh, heating up the, the pour over unit and also the vessel that it's going into. This is a double wall vessel, so it's actually gonna hold the heat a little bit better compared to whatever you might use for the Mr. Coffee, definitely not double wall, $19. And, uh, and for the French press. Place the coffee in and start brewing. So you wanna start your timer. We'll start brewing at the same time. You wanna do about 50 grams of water. And this beginning part is called the bloom. What, what the bloom does is actually, it's opening up the flavors of the coffee. It's beginning to extract uh, or it, it's starting the extraction process and uh, just open it up all your coffee before you, before you push it through. If you, if you add a bunch of water right now, it's gonna start to push all of that coffee to the bottom. On a dripper or on like Mr. Coffee, it's just pouring water and then dumping it into the bottom. Doing this because it's the way that people generally like to do it. Now, you can wait an amount of time or you can just continue to add water on top. I actually like to add water on top because I like for the gravity to stay consistent and push the coffee down. So when I see it almost get to the point to where the beans are showing, I start to add more water. This whole process should take um, maybe three and a half minutes or something like that for the actual brewing of the coffee. You probably spend more time like getting the scale out, uh, measuring out the beans, wetting the filter, all that kind of stuff, figuring out which mug you want to use that day, unless you got like a lucky mug or something like that. But um, this whole process really only takes about six or seven minutes. So we don't do it in the coffee shop, but uh, because we just don't have that much time, we don't got a lot of space. But we do dial in our drip just like this, or j just like the Mr. Coffee machine, or just like the French press, we dial it in the same as we would dial in uh, as somebody might do your pour over. Coffee smelling great. People in here about to be hyped. 
Well, ain't nobody in here. It's quarantine season. This is me and Matt. You want some coffee? I hope you want some coffee, bro. Yeah, it's good. You go get some coffee because we got a whole lot. So we got all three of them right here. The pour over, the French press, and the coffee dripper, little Mr. Coffee, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, was, I, I like to stir these first before I pour them just to, because your, your coffee essentially, as you, as you make the drip, it goes like more concentrated, less concentrated. So you want to stir them. You can start just straight up. Some people like to shake it all around, um, you know, get that hokey pokey in. But, you know, I just like to make sure that I'm not stirring in a circle so that I'm not just like making a, like a, what does that call it? Like a vortex. And then it's just like relaying again. I just want to like agitate it. As you can see already, this is a little bit more like clear, whereas the French press is a little more cloudy. You can see some oil on top, like this is glossy and this is a little more cloudy. Merci coffee. Around this time, usually what we would do is something called cupping. That's where we get our cupping spoon. It's a spoon that has like a, the handle's a little curved and the, the base is wider, so you just kind of and go through. Um, but it's Corona season, so we're gonna do we're gonna do modified cupping. We're gonna put it into a little cup here, and then taste from this one. Again, you always want to start with something hot. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, car alarm went off outside. You know, we still in Chinatown. You know, sometimes a little treacherous, but it seems like somebody's car alarm just went off by accident. Anyway, back to work. We're gonna throw it in here. Okay, okay, much lighter, or very light. Bigger mouthfeel, much more, um, much more oily. I'm not saying oily like greasy, but, but, when you, but when you taste it, it like coats your mouth more. Whereas uh, this one over here just kind of, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't linger as long, which is good or bad. What we all been waiting for, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna front, I like this one the best. <laughs> quick drip, this is the quickest drip that you could get. I don't know, this one just has a good, it's just more well-rounded. And any of these can be catered or edited. Uh, I would actually add a little bit more coffee to this one to make it a little more bold. I also might not French press this coffee. Um, because I think, you know, this is just not my type of coffee. I like something a little bit more bold, a little more chocolatey. This is a lot brighter. Up to you. Um, but out of all these, like, boys, I'm going with the Mr. Coffee. It's up to you again, like I said. I'm just hype you guys watch. Let us know in the comments. Let us know whatever, how you feeling. But really, all that matters is you make whatever makes you happy. Just as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Do what you got to do. It's your boy, Eweezy. I'm going to catch you after quarantine. Thank you.